Hello, I'm Carolyn and this is part two of using Interpolate to help design some cutting files. This video also assumes that you have some prior knowledge. If not, visit my blog at cuttingtime.blogspot.com or watch the video part one. Let's start with a rectangle. Of course, when you do this, you would make it the correct width and height. Then we draw a circle and go path, object to path. You must make the circle an object before you do anything else. Then I just like to change the colour. Don't have to do that, but I find it just makes it easier to see what I'm doing when I'm trying to place it in the right location. I also like to change the transparency. The lower left corner here, this little box, if you reduce the number, it changes the transparency and makes your object lighter. Oops, so I'll just make a duplicate. Now if I hold down the control button, as I move it, it will stay in line with the original. Just zoom in, still hold the control button. That looks about okay. Now that shape's selected, so I'll just hold down shift and click on the other circle so they're both selected. Then go effects, generate from path, interpolate. So exponent I'll leave at zero, steps I will change, method I'll leave at one, and I'll tick live preview. This is also where transparency comes in handy. I can see they're overlapping just a tiny bit. Might just add one more and overlap them a bit more. Maybe one more again. That looks about right. Apply and close. Now these are a group which we have to ungroup before we can do anything else. So go object, ungroup. Then just select everything and go path, union. That can actually be used as a cutting file. But I'd like to go one step further to give it a lacy look. So we need some circles. So draw a little tiny circle. Zoom in. Path, object to path. Now we need two duplicates. So I just did them all directly on top of each other. Then just make a shape design that you would like. Keep in mind this white space will actually be cardstock. These blue circles will be cut out, so you need to leave a big enough space that it won't tear when you cut it out. Just select them, go path, union. That's to make them act as one piece. Just bring them up and locate them. They're too big, so we can just make them smaller. I might just bring the transparency back up to 100 to make them easier to see. So with the shape you just make it the size you want it to be. Now then, I like to use guides. If you haven't used them before, you just come along to where these measurements are and just drag and a guide will come out. So I've got that running through the centre and I'd like this to be central. I'll make a duplicate, hold down the control button as I drag it over so it, it stays in line. Just drag another guide out. So this shape is selected, hold down the shift key and click on the other so they're both selected. This time I can go Effects, Previous Effects Settings. Now it brings up the box with the same settings. If I tick Apply, as you can see, it's lining up with the result I had previously. So go Apply and Close. Once again, have to ungroup. This time I want to cut them away. And you can only do that with two objects, so these have to act as one. So just carefully select all of them. 
Africa part union, they will now act as one. Hold down the shift key, select your other shape, go path, difference. And it's now cut them out and you have another cutting file. If you would like to see more, you can always go to my blog at cuttingtimeblogspot.com. Thank you.